Okay, so it turns out that there's a close relationship between force and energy. Um, we've seen a little bit what this looks like because we know how to calculate the work done by a force. That's going to be the integral of F dot ds. But remember that the work is equal to the change in potential energy. So negative delta u is going to have that same relationship. Okay, so this is a little bit different because work is a, um, a line integral, but potential energy is just a function of position. Okay, so um, if we take the derivative of the integral expression, then just using the, um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, we'll get the force. And then um, if we take the derivative of that, we have to take the derivative of the other thing in the expression. Okay, so what you find is that the force is going to be equal, like let's say we take the um, x derivative, then the force is going to be equal to negative du by dx. Okay, and there's a similar relationship for the y and the z direction. Okay, so essentially, if you know the force, you can figure out the potential energy. And if you know the potential energy, you can figure out the force. Um, essentially, you have um, equivalent information in those two things. You just have to take an integral or a derivative. Um, so that's really kind of interesting because we can look at the cases where we know what the potential energy looks like and we can figure out stuff about the motion. So let's consider the case of a spring. Okay, so we know that the potential energy for a spring is one half kx squared. All right, so if I plot that out, then I have x and u. Um, and I know that um, this is going to just look like a parabola, kind of like this. Um, and so if I want to know what the force is going to be at any position along the um, x-axis, well, I just take the derivative. So on the left side, the derivative is going to be negative. Um, and so um, then when I take negative du by dx, I'm going to get a force to the right. And it'll be smaller when I get closer to the axis. Um, when I cross to the positive side, then I'm going to get a negative force and that also will be um, bigger further from the axis and smaller closer to the axis. Okay, so this is how we can identify a restoring force. We can see that the force is always um, exerted back towards the center. Okay. Um, and if you think about it, if we know the total amount of energy in a situation like this, so here is the total amount of energy, well then we can identify that um, all of the energy will be potential energy at that point and at that point. Okay, so that's a turnaround point because the kinetic energy is zero. The object has come to a stop. Okay. So essentially what will happen as um, an object is um, being subjected to this potential energy function is it's going to um, move back and forth. So when it's over here, it's going to experience a force back to the right, um, and then it's going to speed up until it gets to this axis. Then it's going to start slowing down, but still moving to the right. And then once it gets to the turnaround point over here, then it's going to turn around and go back, um, speed up until it gets to the center point, and then start slowing down until it gets to the turnaround point again. So what you get from this is oscillations. Okay. Um, essentially what this gives you um, using this relationship is we're going to know the force as a function of position and knowing the force as a function of position is, is going to tell you the acceleration as a function of position. So this gives A as a function of the position, which is a little different than A as a function of time. Um, you can maybe from that figure out the velocity as a function of position as well. Um, in particular, you can do that because you know that the kinetic energy plus potential energy is going to be constant. So you can know A of X and also V of X from this potential energy graph. Um, let's do another example. Let's consider the case of a roller coaster. In the case of a roller coaster, the energy is going to be gravitational potential energy. So U equals mgy. All right, so if I just draw some weird roller coaster shape where we have U as a function of X, this is just going to be related to the height of the roller coaster at any given point. Okay, so um, the higher the coaster is, the um, higher the potential energy, and so it's just essentially the shape of the track. Okay, so using the relationship that we have, we can figure out that over here, the force is going to be to the right, over here it's going to be to the right, over here it'll be to the left, here to the right, here to the left. Okay, so just the derivative um, is you know, the slope of the graph, and then the force is going to be related to the negative derivative of the potential energy. Um, and just like we did above, we can figure out for some value of total energy, like this, um, if that's what the total energy looks like, then the kinetic energy will be highest when the potential energy is lowest. Um, the turnaround points are going to be when all of the energy is potential energy. So again, you'll get this oscillation back and forth in this little well. If the total energy were higher, something like that, then you'd have a more complicated motion, um, still with turnaround points when it gets to the edge, um, but the um, object will speed up and slow down in sort of a complicated way as it is subjected to these different forces. Okay, so notice that um, the shape of the track or you know, the shape of the potential energy function generally does not tell you the starting point, and it doesn't tell you what direction an object is going at any given time. So for instance, um, at a given time, an object could be right here and it could be moving left, um, or it could be here and it could be moving left, or it could be moving right. You know, there's really no way to know ahead of time. And at different points in the motion, the same object at the same position might have different velocities. So, um, you know, it's, it's important to be a little careful not to read too much into the exact values of, um, of the graph because you might not have enough information to know exactly what the trajectory looks like, but you can get a lot of information about what the possible motions are in a situation like this.